Hello everyone, Victor Tanzig here, and welcome to the Reddit Railway. Today I have a collection of customer submitted stories to share, so all aboard! My cousin and I recently fell out. It all started after he logged into my YouTube account and deleted half my videos. I was absolutely furious since I didn't have backups. I don't have the storage space. I angrily ranted at him and told him to never pull a stunt like this again. He got scared and backed off. Then he sent me a link to his Discord account and kept spamming me until I accepted. I then told him he was underage. He's 11. In response he said, and I quote, My mummy made it for me. I finally had enough of his crap and reported him for being underaged. When he found out I did that, he was livid. He's been telling lies about me ever since. He then decided to take it to a whole new level. He's been doxing me on Discord, revealing my name to random strangers. I was informed of this from a YouTube comment, which my cousin replied to. He said, I told you not to speak to him. After that, he started making excuses, claiming he didn't do it, but he had already blown his cover. I told my mother about this, and she's going to speak to my aunt. I'm scared out of my mind right now. It's terrifying to think that people I don't even know have my personal information. Is there anything else I can do? Not really. The sad fact is, once your info is online, there's no getting it back. And unless he reveals something like your address or phone number, I wouldn't be too worried. I'd be more concerned about how much of a monster your cousin is at such a young age. Unless there's some serious intervention, I reckon his future will be spent behind bars. My dad works at the terminal of a large shipping company. It's located in the suburb of a large city that has a fairly high crime rate. After loading the trailers, they park them near the fence so the truck drivers can easily pick them up. An important detail to mention is there was a small gang operating in the area, led by some lowlife named John. This crew decided to rob the terminal. My dad and a co-worker were there the night this happened. They dropped off the last trailer and went to finish the paperwork. My dad's co-worker couldn't find his logbook, so went outside to look for it. That was when he found several of the trailers were wide open, their locks had been broken. The co-worker ran back inside to fetch the supervisor. They went outside to search the area and found two gang members helping themselves to a big screen TV. The crooks bolted with the supervisor and co-worker giving chase. They actually caught them, but the rest of the gang was able to escape in a getaway truck. As luck would have it, one of the men caught was John himself. The supervisor called the police and he was arrested. It didn't take long for them to catch the rest of John's crew and recover the stolen items, all of which were shipped out on time. John is currently awaiting trial and is likely facing some serious prison time. You know, when you think about it, you don't often hear about robberies being carried out at shipping companies, which seems strange considering the amount of valuable goods they carry. Maybe their security is just that good. Or maybe all of their employees are like this supervisor and co-worker. I gotta give them credit for chasing after John and his accomplice. I certainly wouldn't have been brave enough to do that. I used to have an Instagram account with many followers from several friend groups. I mainly used that account to message people. I also had a second, more artsy account where I posted things like Photoshop edits, music, and film. The friends I keep in touch with through my Insta were mostly from school and my film course. I also followed some of their friends. At the start of the year, one of these friends of a friend named Box posted a story offering his followers $500 for guessing a disguised number. I guessed it, and the original friend of this friend, Vic, consulted me about receiving payment, or so I I thought, Vic asked me to change my email address to a giveaway address. After pondering whether I should, I decided I would in order to get the $500. Later, when I looked at my email, there was a notification my Instagram had been changed into a Nigerian email address. Then it hit me. I had been hacked. I found out Vic's account had been previously hacked by the same scam. I tried to log into my Instagram, but it was no use. I eventually gave up and made a new main account. Thankfully, I was able to save my arts account and warn everyone else about the hack. I'm usually aware of scams like this and know how devastating they can be, but for some reason, disguising as a friend was all it took to trick me. Knowing I would freak out if I handled it alone, I called my girlfriend, McKenna. I told her about the hacker and she was obviously concerned. She recommended I change any passwords that were the same as my Instagram. 
which was all of them. It was annoying, but that's exactly what I did. Even so, I was terrified the hacker had gotten hold of my information and would ruin my life. But nothing happened. However, the scammer wasn't finished. I was able to get my school friends to block and report the hacker, but the group chat of my film course didn't act fast enough. The hacker told one of my friends, Christine, that my account was fine. Luckily, I was able to save her from being hacked as well. Realizing he had been found out, the hacker started insulting us. We were able to get him kicked from the chat. He then went after McKenna, calling her all sorts of horrible names. She roasted him back before blocking him. He tried to go after some of my other friends, but they also tore him a new one. By far the funniest thing to happen out of this was another friend of mine, Arnie, tried to trick and threaten the hacker into giving me my account back. He wasn't successful, but Arnie was so satisfyingly annoying to the hacker that the bastard actually blocked him. There are obvious lessons to learn from this. Never get involved in any giveaways, even if they're from people you seemingly know. I also learned to act sassier towards hackers as it's genuinely funny to roast them. As for the one who got me, I hope he gets his comeuppance. So do I. This is why you should always limit the amount of people you follow on social media. And I find it absolutely hilarious OP's friends were able to make this hacker rage quit. How often does that happen? And what do they say to him? If you're watching this OP, I hope you'll tell us in the comments. When I was 13, I started working at a laundromat owned by my father. He wanted me to learn from him so I could take it over one day. I watched him work and tried to follow his example. When I turned 16, my dad trusted me with taking quarters out of the machines and paying bills at the bank. From there, I would be trusted with closing the store at night and opening in the morning. Even though I upheld these responsibilities, there were some problems. My mum wasn't on board with me going out to close lay at night because the laundromat was in a rather unfriendly area. Sometimes I would also forget to close, and sometimes I would wake up late and not open it. My dad gave me many warnings and I promised to do better, even though it happened several times. Then one night, my dad went to close the store and was attacked by some drunk teenagers. He wasn't badly hurt, but his phone was smashed. This really freaked out my mother, and she told my dad to not send me out so late anymore until I could defend myself. Three weeks before my 18th birthday, my mum was working late at her job. I had to close the store since my dad was sick. She knew I had to. Dad wanted to keep the store open to attract customers who did their laundry late at night. So I headed to the laundry at 11.30 p.m. Since there were no customers inside, I decided to start cleaning. I collected the trash and went to throw it out. In the back alley, I saw a tall man smoking a cigarette. He hadn't seen me, so I slowly walked towards the dumpster, all the while trying not to attract his attention. But I did the moment I dumped the bag. The man saw me and told me to come over, but I knew not to trust strangers. He then came closer, saying I could trust him. I immediately headed for the door. As soon as he realized I wasn't going to cooperate, he started charging towards me. I ran inside and locked the door. I quickly turned off the lights and closed the store before rushing home. I was a lot more cautious after that and tried to not be out later than I should. This may sound like my mum was right, but when all is said and done, I was just helping out my dad. I can't blame your mum for being worried. What parent wouldn't be concerned for their child, especially after an encounter like this? Jesus, tap dancing Christ. What was this bloke trying to do? Maybe it's best we don't think about that. You should look into finding ways to protect yourself. After all, if this happens again, you might not be so lucky. I'm a good World of Warships player. Ever since 2017, I've become quite popular and always manage to have fun whenever I play. One of my most memorable battles goes as follows. I was playing an aircraft carrier called the Kaga. I spent a majority of the battle attacking ships on the opposing side in order to help my teammates. By the end of the battle, it was just me and one enemy ship, another carrier called the Saipan. The enemy had managed to score more points than us, and I knew they would win if I didn't do something. I launched a series of strikes using torpedo and dive bombers. I did have a slight advantage over Saipan because in real life, the Kaga was a battleship that was converted into a carrier during her construction. In game, this meant she was carrying enough planes for me to launch another sortie right after finishing the first attack. As I launched some dive bombers, I could see the enemy was only 10 points away from the winning score. So I positioned my planes accordingly and started my attack run. 
Just as the enemy was about to win, BAM! The bombs sank the Saipan. Victory was ours. I was so proud of this, as were my teammates. If there are any World of Warship players watching, remember the battle isn't lost just because you're the last one standing. You can still win so long as you think critically. This was a great story to read. I've never played World of Warships, but I see ads for it all the time. Have you ever played it? If so, what's it like? And have you ever said, you sunk my battleship? Sorry, couldn't resist. And with that, I'll end the video here. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.